So the reason we're doing this is basically to give us more room, especially on this side for shock mounts, control arm mounts, all that kind of stuff. Uh, this is also necessary if you want to do an RTEC truss. They give you a diagram on their website, but they basically want you to cut this bump stop pad off, both your control arm mounts, and then section off two inches of your center section here. We're going to be taking care of this control arm mount over here as well, but that's a lot easier. Uh, I'm going to walk you through it, see if this is something you guys want to tackle yourselves. And if not, at least you get some entertainment out of watching me struggle with it. much meat as you can on the bracket you're trying to take off. Gives you a lot more power and leverage hammering out here. Also just gives you a bigger target hammering out here rather than trying to ha hammer right up against uh, your weld. Don't try and cut this bracket super close to the tube unless you just want to grind the whole thing off. If you're trying to knock brackets off like this you're actually better off leaving more meat to beat. Oh, that sucks. Everything is covered in grinding dust. Everything. All right, so now that we have all the old bracketry cut off, we're going to trim back this part of the casting about two inches. We're also gonna have some of these plug welds to deal with. They don't look too bad. Honestly, they didn't 
weld in that much. Just so that I can work this off in stages, I'll probably come in and cut across like that and then come back in with a chisel or something. I'll be, should be able to knock that out. We'll see how that works. I think I kind of figured out the strategy here, at least what works for the tools that I have. So I'm coming in across on either side of these plug welds. And then because the cutoff wheel is round, I can't get into this corner as it starts to trail away because of the round cutoff wheel. That's basically where I come in at an angle, cut across it, and that allows it to split here and split across that and all the way around. And then I'll come back in when I knock off this plug weld, that part will come easy because that should all be one piece still. Oh wow, <laughs> that plug weld just knocked right off. All right, so as you can see, we actually exposed a little machine surface here. Just for reference, if anybody's curious, I'm showing that your thickness of your casting here is right at about 440 thousandths, 0 0.440 inches. That should get you all the way through the casting on its thinnest parts. That's your target. Now she's ready to just sand all this off, smooth everything out, start putting everything back together. If you're watching and paying attention, which man, yeah, maybe some of you are, when I'm trying to sand down these welds and stuff, if you'll notice, I actually am keeping the disc basically so that as it contacts the tube, it's running along it. Uh, I'm not coming in like this and grinding across the tube. Going across the tube is gonna score it up pretty good and you'll dig in real quick. And then when you go to paint this, you'll see a bunch of highs and lows of where you did that and you're not going to be able to blend it real well and it just it won't look very good up and down it not across that's the bottom line all right so that is pretty well smoothed out except for all these little pock marks i don't know where those came from yeah oh well anyway getting there Alright, so to finish this job, I picked myself up one of these this morning, and we'll see if it lasts through the job. Gotta be optimistic. Where have you been all my life? This thing is making this finish so nice. Uh, nothing specific to the Harbor Freight one. Uh, if I'm honest, this thing's kind of heavy and kind of annoying. Uh, I'm gonna eventually, I'll upgrade to a pneumatic one. 
but geez, for getting a surface finish on there like that, that's pretty awesome. I'm, uh, I'm really happy with that. Did I mention it was Harbor Freight? That's why I bought more belts. All right, so what I'm doing here is I'm just going back in with the welder and filling in all of these slots that I cut when I was cutting too deep. Much easier plan is just don't cut into it in the first place. Just be safe with the cutoff wheel and avoid cutting it up because I'm creating a bunch more grinding for myself now doing this. But it's what it is, gotta deal with it. I'm not running any kind of pre or post heat on the casting because I'm not welding the casting to anything. I'm just filling. Just be careful with your heat or you don't want to concentrate all the heat in one area because it could crack or warp the housing. So. Be patient, keep going around. Uh, make sure your ground clamp's in a good place. Don't let it run through your ball joints or your bearings or anything like that. Just keep in mind where the electricity's flowing to. Uh, bearings are not happy when you put welding current through them. So I'm calling this done. Um, that was a lot of grinding. The floor is like the most painful slip and slide ever. Uh, there's a mess everywhere. But look at how nice the axle looks. We've got plenty of space for all of our bracketry. Any trusses we want to run. Like I said, that Artec truss, this is something you need to do for that. I could probably do it in half the time if I was to do it again. And I really could save myself a lot of time if I was more careful with my cutting wheels and the bandsaw and the grinder and my hammer. Uh, I was just more careful in general, actually. Uh, hopefully watching the video kind of helped you figure out how you're going to do it and not make the same mistakes I did. And if not, hopefully at least it was entertaining to watch me struggle. So thanks for watching, guys. See you next time. I get to clean up. <laughs>